Well, hello class, and welcome to uh, almost, almost the middle of week five. Um, uh, as you can tell, I'm coming to you from my living room. So, and I like to do a video at least probably once a once a term, once a semester from my living room, or at least from my my I've got a um, nice comfortable chair in my office or someplace like that, because I know that you're doing your work probably from a chair very similar to this. And so I want to show, you know, I'm doing my work from home. Um, I actually never go to campus uh, any longer. All of my teaching that I do for APU is all online. Um, and so uh, you may uh, you may never actually go to campus either. You might do all of your coursework online. So what I want to do in this um, quick uh, um, video, and probably about 10, 15 minutes, so I want to go over the assignment, okay? So this assignment that you're working in in groups uh, that we're titling the Organizational Career Development Group Project, okay? Um, so this assignment is due Wednesday of Unit 8, okay? So even though the term officially ends on Friday, this assignment is due on Wednesday because your vocational profile plan is due on um, Friday. And I wanna give you a couple extra days to focus on getting that assignment done, okay? Similar to that assignment, this is one that you need to not delay, okay? <clears throat> Don't wait to get started on this project. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you haven't already, you need to read the assignment thoroughly, and I would encourage you to read it multiple times by yourself, and then I would make sure that you read it multiple times with your um, group uh, uh, partner. Okay, and so there's six groups. I mentioned in the video that I posted earlier this week. There's six groups, so there's 12 total students. You've been assigned one additional person. You've all been emailed. You can see those email addresses. I did that intentionally, so it's not blind and carbon copied, but you actually know who you're working with and you can communicate with them. So what I would encourage you to do is to communicate with them early and often. If you have not already reached out to them, please do so right away. I would also ask you that if you are um, doing a copy all, remove me from correspondence because I don't need to know what it is you're talking about. All I need to see is the final product, okay? So that's gonna be really important. So read through the assignment multiple times. All right, so here we go. You are a team of consultants. You may be internal or external. Either you are gonna do this on an actual organization you work for, which in which case make sure that you uh, conceal names. You know, you don't have to necessarily disclose what organization it is that you work for. Um, you know, you might wanna put a little disclaimer ahead of and say, um, uh, the name of the organization and the employees have been changed to protect innocent bystanders or something like that, right? So. Um, but if you're going to work as an internal, it's for an actual organization you're part of. And if you're going to work for an external, it's for one um, that you can easily access the information about the organization online. Okay? So you're going to uh, work with these organizations as either internal or external consultants. <clears throat> and they've hired you, or at least they've offered you the position. You're pitching them. Uh, they've hired you to help them assess their organization in terms of career development and then to offer a proposal on how they might increase their effectiveness in this regard. You have agreed to take on uh, this organization as your client. So as you do your research, you make your assessment and you develop your proposal, think everything through well in terms of both content and presentation so you can effectively persuade the leaders of the organization to consider your recommendations. Your job is to sell them and me uh, on your recommendations, okay? And there's three parts. There's the final document, there's the handout, and there's the 30-minute presentation, okay? So let me really quickly go over each of those. The final document is 10 pages, okay? It's the final report, and it should include uh, executive summary, the nature and scope of the project, your methodology, your findings and conclusions, your philosophical foundations, your recommendations, your implementation guidelines, and your summary of benefits. Of course, use APA. Um, and then there's some details in the career proposal report elements that are documented below if you actually click into the assignment itself. The second part that's included and required in this assignment is a handout. So similar to your vocation and calling assignment, you need to have a handout that clearly shows kind of the roadmap of where you're headed for the presentation. And then there's a 30 minute presentation, okay? Now here's the tricky thing when it comes to the 30 minute presentation. A number of you are not in the same area, okay? That said, you still need to do a presentation together. So you need to figure out how that's gonna work. Are you gonna do a Google Hangout? Are you gonna do you know, a Zoom uh, discussion? Um, you, know, you can sign up for a free Zoom account and then you can actually sh share your screen um, <clears throat> and you can record it and then you can just upload that. Um, I don't necessarily, ne necessarily need to see your faces, but I need to hear both of your voices. Can it, and it can't be, I say this, it should not be separate presentations, right? So one of you shouldn't do 15 minutes and the other person do the next 15 minutes. It needs to be done. I mean, if you can edit it together, 
great. But if you can't, uh, if that's not where your skill sets lie, then it's got to be in one fell swoop. Okay, so if you have questions on how you could do this, let's talk. And again, um, don't wait until the day before the assignment is due to ask me. Let's talk early and let's talk often if you do have uh, those questions, okay? <clears throat> All right. So, and then um, we're going to talk more about it, but basically, similar to the location calling assignment, you will upload your assignment materials, your URL, your final report, and your handouts, both to the assignment section as well as to uh, the, um, the discussion uh, forum so people can have access, okay? So here's the guidelines. Um, you're going to show a, a basic level of knowledge of career development. Okay, so you have a number of articles that you should be reading. And you're going to provide uh, your two best practice examples from other organizations that are similar to the organization that you're looking into. And describe the work they're doing in career development. You may know of an organization that's doing well and or you may find some examples online. Okay, look for best practices beyond just what you find in the reading. Uh, look for real examples and attempt to secure an interview or dialogue with a person in charge of that program at this organization, like a live person, okay? Note their strengths, their weaknesses, and point out what you would recommend uh, should be adopted and what you would recommend be avoided by your client, okay? Describe and comment on the philosophy of career development you're proposing. Show how this relates to organizational culture and health, okay? That's going to be really important So we talk about career development. Uh, we talk about organizational health um, and uh, um, and culture. Discuss the use of assessments in your proposal. Okay, so such assessments may include the ones that you've used in class and or others that you know of or have found valuable yourself. Right, the Myers Briggs, the Strong Interest Inventory, the Clifton Strengths Finder, um, the Achieving Styles Inventory. Talk about all these things. Whatever might fit well within the organization, uh, the context of the organization with which you're working. Okay. Why have you chosen these specific assessments that you're recommending and how will they be used? Be sure to talk about the role of an individual in uh, career development. Uh, suggest implementation plans as well as challenges to implementation and then close with a strong vision for the value of what you are proposing. Okay? And if you look at the final report, again, executive summary, here's details, project background scope, methodology, findings, conclusion, recommendations, implementation, and summary. Okay. Here's something that I want you to remember. So when you come to number three, okay, number three in this assignment description, methodology. Here's the question it's asking. How did you approach the problem? Your readers, me, right, the people that you're presenting this to, so to speak, maybe, and, and frankly, maybe this becomes an actual project. Maybe you really do get to present it uh, to uh, the powers that be, and maybe it actually becomes something that's implemented organizationally, right? So, so you want to talk about um, uh, how you came up with the results and conclusions of the basis of your report, okay? The right answers to these questions add to your credibility and strongly support your recommendations. Um, I, I don't know how much uh, you look at uh, this idea of, or this theoretical kind of framework. Um, I don't know how much of you look at uh, in the master's program leadership uh, regarding design thinking. But I like the idea of design thinking, and maybe I've talked about this already, but design thinking really stems from this idea of thinking from a design vantage point. And there's a lot more to it. It's much more involved than that. But basically, the, the big idea is that um, you cannot identify the right solution if you don't identify the right problem. Okay, so design is coming in and thinking and observing and identifying what is the actual problem. So I give the example all the time. If I go to the doctor, and so my wife and I, we've had four kids, okay? Um, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of information. So um, uh, we've had four kids, and the doctors suggested, um, and there's some medical procedures that can be done uh, that it would not be healthy for us to have any more children, okay? So let's say something uh, happened, okay? And when we thought this medical uh, procedure had been done to no longer allow us to have any more children, at least carry them um, naturally, right? Adoption, foster, of course, are still uh, definitely options for us on the table, um, but we can't have any more natural children. So let's say Katie, my wife, um, she goes in to the doctor. She's been feeling really kind of lethargic and tired, and she feels like, really bloated, um, and, and things are not, they're not right, right? She's kind of 
having a hard time remembering things. She's always sleeping. She's anemic, you know, all these different things. She feels like there's no energy. Um, she goes to the doctor and the doctor looks at her and says, well, you know, have you, um, have you had, you know, this procedure? Oh, well, you can't. Okay. So you can't have any more babies. Great. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's not it. It can't be pregnancy. Um, I, I bet you're just, you know, have you been eating a lot of salty foods. Maybe you're just retaining water. Um, and, uh, you say you've been feeling nauseous. Well, here's some Zofran. Okay. Why don't you take some Zofran? That's a big problem, right? Because if she is pregnant and let's say she is, uh, again, she can't be, but if she is pregnant, um, there's some pretty significant, uh, side effects that can take place both for the mother and the child by taking Zofran. Okay. That's a, that's a, that's a big issue. Um, you know, and why don't you just, you know, uh, eat less salty food. Here's some Zofran. Um, basically that's putting a bandaid, um, on uh, internal bleeding. And so if they don't identify as a doctor the right problem, they will not just identify the right, wrong solution, there could be some really dire circumstances um, and, and some outcomes based upon that. I think the same thing uh, is true organizationally. <clears throat> we, um, <clears throat> we hierarchy so often jobs that are more important than other jobs. So, so doctors, right, it's this God complex, doctors are more important than organizational leaders. Because doctors, you know, they hold the balance of um, one's life and death in their hands oftentimes. Yes and no, right? There's some truth there. But I would argue that so too do organizational leaders in many ways. And so can we say that, that you know, having a, a title of director is as important as a medical doctor? Yeah, I think we can because you're, you're dealing with people. And so who's who's to say that being a medical doctor is the most important thing because we can still identify the wrong problems, which then means we can identify the wrong solutions, which means we can have some really dire uh, outcomes for our employees, which could then end up leading to some really significant problems in their lives. So having said that, I really want you to think about this methodology. How did you get to the place? Because this, I think in many ways is the crux of your success, right? The, the crux of the successful presentation and paper is based upon did you come up with the right solution but you can't do that if you don't come up with the right problem initially okay so I want you to really think deeply about the methodology all right so if you need to you can click on the link uh, there in the assignment description um, for the organizational career development group project click on that and you should be good to go all right if you have any questions please as I mentioned please contact me early 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 and often um, I'm happy to help as, as really however I can, but here's the kicker. I can't help you if I don't know what your problems are, right? And that's, that's, that's a big problem. So um, like I said, read the assignment multiple times and then read it again and then read it again with your uh, partner in your group um, and then uh, come up with questions that you have and run them by me. Don't just, you know, assume that you know best. No, run them by me. Ask me questions and make sure... Uh, that um, you are fully versed in what it is it, that it's expected of you. Okay, um, I did realize in looking at the syllabus there was one mistake. <clears throat> the syllabus says that this final assignment or this this almost final assignment, the career development uh, project with your group uh, member, is worth 15 points. The actual assignment um, shows it is 20 points, and it is 20 points. Okay, so I just put the wrong number. I think I didn't update it from previous uh, syllabi. So this organizational career development group project is in fact worth 20 points, which is 20% of your grade, okay? So it's gonna be important that you make sure that you do that and do a really, really good job on this assignment. Your vocational profile and plan is worth 25% of your class or your, your class grade. So that's 55% just in those two final assignments that are due uh, right there at the end of the semester. So again, if you have any questions, um, make sure you click on the syllabus um, description, but really click into the assignment tab, um, and that's going to give you the more detailed information on what it is that's expected of you in the assignment. So it does not, um, as it says in the syllabus, it's not included at the end of the syllabus, it's actually in the assignment section, so it's easier to access and find when you're looking for the details and more specificity for this assignment. All right, so have fun with that. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me early. Um, and if we need to go back and forth, you know, 10, 15, 20 times to finally get the answer to you and it makes sense, I'm happy to do that. All right. Have a great week. Thanks so much for your great work uh, thus far in the class. And I look forward to these final assignments.